The Grinch story. That's also loosely based on Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, isn't it? Am I the last person on earth to figure that out? Hi guys, April here and welcome back to day two of Vlogmas. I thought I'd do something more Christmas related by talking about some of my favorite holiday films. Some of them are definitely holiday classics, some of them are more holiday adjacent. In the world of film, adjacent counts. So let's get started. Number five, Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas from 1966. It's the original, I believe, and it's also a classic um, with Boris Karloff uh, doing the narration. I don't know who does the singing. Does he do the singing as well? If you've been living under a rock or were born yesterday, the Grinch is a kind of creature that lives in the mountains near a small village called Whoville. And he is really tired of them being all happy, shiny people, especially around the holidays. So in efforts to kind of put a damper on their holiday spirit, he decides to steal Christmas by sneaking into town and stealing all of their gifts. And it has the absolute opposite effect. It's such the perfect holiday film in a sense that it's about family and community and the true meaning of Christmas. And uh, you just can't really not have a smile on your face after you watch it. I love the original film. No matter how many reboots they intend to do, I believe the first one will always be my personal favorite. Number four is Last Holiday from 2006, starring Queen Latifah. This is about a woman who works in a department store in the kitchen and appliance area. Her dream is to become a chef and to open up her own restaurant. But as sometimes we do, she puts her dreams off for better times. You know, I'll get to it when I can. Well, it's time for her annual checkup. And unfortunately, her doctor tells her that she doesn't have very long to live. So in an effort to realize some of her dreams, she basically cleans out all of her bank accounts and books this very expensive, luxurious trip to a resort in Europe where one of her favorite chefs is in-house. And she goes and she has the best time of her life just throwing caution to the wind and taking those chances that she never allowed herself to do before. You know, it's one of those sweet, late, not just romantic comedies, but one where it says, you know, be your own best friend. And basically that's what she is. She becomes her own best friend and a lot in her life changes because of that. And also it's set around Christmas and this is beautiful Alp like resort that she's in. So there's snow everywhere and she's in all of these nice ski outfits. It's really great. I love this film. And uh, yeah, I probably will watch it sometime in the next couple of days. And by the way, LL Cool James is the love interest. The ladies love Cool James. Number three is Black Christmas, 1974 and 2006. It's a double feature, y'all. So Black Christmas is about a group of girls from a sorority house who are getting ready to go home for a holiday break. When the night before they are leaving, they start receiving these obscene phone calls with a guy on the other end of the line saying crude and vulgar things. They think it's just a prank, you know, guys from another frat house just giving them a hard time. But who it really turns out is a man named Billy who has recently escaped from a mental hospital and who wants to return home for the holiday festivities. Their sorority house was his childhood home. But unbeknownst to them, the calls are coming from inside the house. Billy's already back home and soon the walls are screaming and the bodies are dropping and it is just the craziest ride you will ever take that does not involve a personified snowman. I, I honestly don't know what this was. That's pretty much the story for the 1974 one. And the 2006 one was kind of billed as a soft reboot, but in actuality, it's a proper sequel. It takes place 15 years after the events of the first film. Billy is still with us. 
um, that is not really a spoiler. And, <laughs> and he is up to his old antics. However, we find out a lot more about Billy's backstory and his family. And uh, it gets really crazy, y'all. And there's a lot of nice twist in the second film that kind of blows the first film out of the water. They both should be watched together to really get the full enjoyment out of it. I would say that this crazy double feature makes a nice break from the Hallmark Marathon movies that you've been watching. Don't get me wrong, I love those Hallmark movies, but sometimes a little slashy, slashy, stabby, stabby is exactly the perfect gift. Number two is The Long Kiss Goodnight from 1996, starring Gina Davis and Samuel L. Jackson. Gina Davis stars as a woman who has amnesia. She washed up on the shore of a small town without any memory of who she was in her previous life. And in efforts to kind of find out who she is, she hires a private investigator, um, played by Sam Jackson, to kind of dig into her past. In the meantime, she moves on with her life in this town. She gets a job, she gets married, she has a kid, and she becomes Mrs. Claus in the holiday parade. But one night, she has a car accident and she hits her head and her memories start to slowly come back. We find out that she was an assassin in her former life, uh, a very dangerous one at that. But fate kind of is intervening here because not only does she get her memories back, but Sam finds out a few more details about who she was and some very dangerous people happen to see her on television as Mrs. Claus. So all of these things converge around the holiday season, which is very fortuitous because she is the only person who can stop something very bad from happening, I think, on Christmas Eve. It's a high octane action movie starring a kick-ass female lead. Gina Davis is one bad bitch. I'm not going to even lie. It's just one of those great explosive 90s movies that you just have a great time watching. Plus, Gina Davis and Samuel L. Jackson have such great chemistry. Sam, I mean, he is just a gift, right? Only he could walk the very fine line of ridiculous, gross, and sweet. All in all, I love this film. I don't know if a lot of people would consider it a holiday film, but I do because it takes place around Christmas, so it's holiday adjacent, so it counts. Hmm. Before I get to number one, I'm gonna slot in an honorable mention, and that is Go from 1999. Like the long kiss goodnight, it takes place during the holiday season, so it's holiday adjacent. So this film has an ensemble cast that has a multi-layered stories that center around a drug dealer named Simon, uh, a drug deal gone really bad, and a rave. It takes place mostly in Los Angeles and a road trip to Las Vegas. It stars some of your favorite, or at least some of my favorite uh, character actors. You have Timothy Olyphant, Sarah Pauly, Brecken Meyer, Tay Diggs, Katie Holmes. I mean, the list goes on and on. You will recognize almost every face. I was a young person in the 90s. I went to raves and I knew a version of all of these people. Sorry mom. It has a great soundtrack. Early no doubt. I just really have a great time watching it. I could watch this movie any time of the year but again it is uh, timed around the holiday season and that's why I thought I put it in here just as a quirky kind of one-off holiday film. And my number one favorite Christmas film is Scrooged. 1988 starring Bill Murray. This is basically an 80s updated version of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol where Bill Murray plays a television producer who makes his entire staff work on Christmas Eve to produce some ridiculous Christmas Eve special because ratings. And because he's such a grouch, the spirit of Christmas comes and gets him right together. What I love about this movie is basically no one can convince me that Bill Murray did not ad-lib 
90% of his lines. It honestly looks like he came onto set every day and said, I know what to do, just follow my lead. And everybody did and had an awesome time. And then the second thing that is so perfect is Carol Kane as the ghost of Christmas present. Now she may look like a cake topper, but she is not here for his shit. You do get Bill Murray, you get Carol Kane, you get Alfre Woodard. I think Buster Poindexter, it plays the ghost of Christmas past. Bob Cap Goldthwait as a person who is being fired <laughs> on Christmas Eve. He goes straight postal and it's hilarious. I love this film. It could get a little long at the end, I know, but just have a couple of cups of spiked eggnog and you'll be fine. Scrooge wasn't always my favorite, but every year I've watched it, it has just become more and more endearing. And now I love it and I can't go one year without watching it. So that's it guys. Those are some of my favorite holiday films. I know I've missed some, I know I've skipped over others, but sharing is caring. So let me know some of your favorite holiday films in the comments below. And tell me if you've seen any of these and where do they fall on your list? Number two is down. I cannot believe it. Two videos in two days. That is a record. If you want to see more videos like this or you're enjoying my vlogmas so far, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe because I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Happy holidays.